business etiquette and negotiation in the international arena. For the purpose of this discussion, we'll use the model of an American company opening branches in emerging markets in various countries. The market is not important to this scenario, but looking at how business practices, culture, and styles of communication and negotiation differ between Americans and other countries is. We'll have to make some generalizations about all the countries in order to give effective examples. These are not meant to suggest that they are applicable to even the majority of any country's citizens. The reality is that once you have finished the research discussed in Video 1, Business Elements of Global Trade and Globalization, you will make a number of generalizations about communicating with your foreign affiliates that include, but are not limited to, the most important words and phrases of their language to know before you go, appropriate styles of greeting such as handshake, hug, bow, etc., how to dress for your audience, whether to jump right into business or get to know each other first, and if personal questions are welcome or taboo. Whatever you do, never underestimate the importance of customs and societal and business cultures in other countries. Never apply the values of your country to any other. Learn theirs and follow theirs. Following is a fairly comprehensive checklist of elements of international communication you should research for each country before you begin negotiations. Building relationships. How important is it to your host affiliate to get to know you, socialize with you, and introduce you to family and friends? Dressing appropriately. What type of attire is appropriate at what time of day in what type of space, i.e. office versus a dinner meeting, even on the golf course? Respecting hierarchy. Although you may come from a company that is very casual about titles and power, you may be doing business in a country where power structure is greatly respected and you need to respect it accordingly. Handshake styles. In some countries, handshakes simply aren't done. In others, you shake with only one hand. In still others, handshakes are welcome, but the firm American handshake has negative connotations, for example. Using titles. Americans are fairly casual about using titles. Most people who get sideways with the law in America don't even bother to refer to the court, as, court judge as your honor. In many countries, this would be t casual enough to cause capital punishment. Make sure you know the titles of your affiliates and how to address them properly. Value of time and punctuality. Americans tend to value punctuality and judge others based on their timeliness. In many countries, being early or late simply isn't that important. Be flexible and don't pass judgment on the issue of punctuality in foreign markets. Personal space. The movie industry has made much of how getting into someone's personal space can change the dynamic of a negotiation. Unless you have done your research and know what values your affiliates have about personal space, don't incorporate anything you've learned in your culture. Tolerance. Tolerance goes two directions. You should absolutely practice complete tolerance of your business affiliates, countries, beliefs, politics, and customs. Conversely, you should not force your tolerances or lack thereof from your culture on them. They don't need or want, probably, to know whether you are liberal or right-wing, enlightened or phobic, generous of spirit or a bigot. Just keep your beliefs to yourself unless they relate specifically to the business at hand. Delivery on promises. Some cultures make promises in the course of business they have no intention to fulfill, and that's just their business styles. Others take promises quite literally, and they simply must be fulfilled. It's a very good practice, regardless of the customs of your host country, to never make promises you can't or won't make good on. Defer to their agenda. Even if you're at the top of the business hierarchy, you are on their turf and should respect and defer to both their actual daily agenda as well as their goals and processes for doing business. Of course, you should tell them if you have time constraints or if their plans are incompatible with yours. But if you don't have such considerations, then go with their flow. Learn the language and culture. Enough cannot be said about integrating into the new market's culture instead of imposing or trying to impose yours upon it. It is in your benefit anyway, as the more you know, the more effective you'll be, and the less chance there is that you can be duped or misled. Good manners. Always learn what is and isn't mannerly in another culture, and practice good manners diligently. As in your own country, people with good manners are better respected and have more credibility. Listen. Don't rush in with your agenda and talk over your affiliates. Knowledge is more valuable than any other asset, and the only way you gain it is by listening. You have much to learn when you begin negotiations. You can teach once they are successful. Mutual benefit. 
If your agenda is a selfish one and not the mutual benefit of both parties, you are likely to fail in global trade negotiations. It is important to your affiliate to make money. Also, keep people employed and have a successful business. It is as important to them as it is to you. Appreciation, not criticism and comparison. Always embrace and enjoy the differences of other countries, con cultures, countries, and business practices. Don't make comparison and value judgments about difference between what you are accustomed to and what you are experiencing. Sameness is boring anyway, and implying culture superiority is boorish. Be articulate. Know what you need to communicate and do so precisely and clearly. Don't be afraid to repeat yourself if necessary, and don't be vague. Well-articulated agendas are easier to negotiate and have less opportunity for misunderstanding built in. Sue Fox, author of Business Etiquette for Dummies, has compiled this fascinating and insightful list of business customs in various countries. We thank Sue for sharing it with us. Argentina. In Argentina, it is rude to ask people what they do for a living. Wait until they offer the information. In Bahrain, never show signs of impatience because it is considered an insult. If tea is offered, always accept it. In Cambodia, never touch or pass something over the head of a Cambodian because the head is considered sacred. In China, as in most Asian cultures, avoid waving or pointing chopsticks, putting them vertically in a rice bowl, or tapping them on the bowl. These actions are considered extremely rude. In the Dominican Republic, when speaking to someone, failure to maintain good eye contact may be interpreted as losing interest in the conversation. In France, always remain calm, polite, and courteous during business meetings. Never appear overly friendly because this could be construed as suspicious, and never ask personal questions. In Greece, if you need to signal a taxi, holding up five fingers is considered to be an offensive gesture if the palm faces outward. Face your palm inward with closed fingers. In Egypt, showing the sole of your foot or crossing your legs when sitting is an insult. Never use the thumbs up sign because it is considered an obscene gesture. In India, avoid giving gifts made from leather because many Hindus are vegetarian and consider cows sacred. Keep this in mind when taking Indian clients to restaurants. Don't wink because it's seen as a sexual gesture. In Japan, never write on a business card or shove the card into your back pocket when you're with the giver. This is considered disrespectful. Hold the card with both hands and read it carefully. It is considered to polite, polite to make frequent apologies in general conversation. In Malaysia, if you receive an invitation from a business associate, always respond in writing. Avoid using your left hand because it is considered unclean. In Mexico, if visiting a bus business associate's home, do not bring up business unless the associate does. While in the Philippines, never refer to a female hosting an event as a hostess, which translates to prostitute. In Singapore, in Singapore, if you plan to give a gift, always give it to the company. A gift to one person is considered a bribe. In Spain, always request your check when dining out. It is considered rude for wait staff to bring you your bill beforehand. In Vietnam, shake hands only with someone of the same sex who initiates it. Physical contact between men and women in public is frowned upon. Now that you are armed with some fundamental rules of etiquette and decorum in international markets, let's look at some cultural approaches to negotiation. Time orientation. Monochronic people and cultures look at time as, as one step after the next in a linear way and tend to be prompt like clear beginnings and endings, have set break times, follow an agenda in a step-by-step -step fashion, require detailed and specific communication, talk in sequence rather than at once, and think tardiness is rude. Polychronic cultures, on the other hand, see time as elastic and actions in time happening simultaneously. For example, they aren't very concerned with when a meeting starts or how long it takes, break when they want or need to, infer and imply a lot, and are comfortable with that, talk at the same time, don't need precise communication, and aren't bothered by a high volume of information, and don't care about promptness. Europeans, Americans, and the Japanese are more likely to be monochronic. Mediterranean, Latin, Eastern, and African countries are typically more polychronic. Knowing and respecting these styles will help you negotiate with effective standards. Space orientation. 
Space orientation refers to everything from comfort level with touching to public versus private and territory to personal space and distance. Expect that in some regions it might be customary to stand quite close when dialoguing. In others, that makes your affiliate uncomfortable. You should always choose to allow a couple feet of personal space between yourself and others if they ch close and that's their custom. Don't back off as that might be rude. Some cultures like Latin, Arab, and Mediterranean are comfortable with touching while North Americans are more privately tactile. Cross-gender touching is also to be noted. Japanese women hold hands, but not men. Mediterranean men will hold hands, but women don't. These patterns dictate touching etiquette when you are meeting and greeting affiliates in other countries. Additional considerations include amount and type of eye contact, whether negotiators sit across from or beside each other on status structures. Countries have different space customs for various ages, genders, and socioeconomic status. Space and manner also influence nonverbal communication that need to be taken into consideration. Power distance refers to deference to power between people in corporate situations, especially as it relates to multinational companies. Some countries ascribe level of power distance based on social status, age, gender, race, education, achievement, background, etc. These are high power distance countries. Countries that tend to believe in human equality are lower power distance countries. The latter are more inclined towards democracy, flat organizational structure, and shared responsibility. Western Europe and Scandinavia are likely to fall into this category. High power distance countries prefer hierarchies, authority figures, and discretionary powers. Southeast Asia, Mexico, and Arab countries are more likely to represent this. Generally, but not always, low power distance cultures do better with ambiguity. Masculine versus feminine. In international corporate culture, these terms do not refer to gender, but assertiveness versus nurturing. Masculine countries like Japan and Latin America tend to be more masculine, preferring achieving and task orientation. Portugal, Thailand, and Scandinavia foster a more nurturing work environment and find life more important than living to work. Take into taken into consideration, these cultural styles should influence the way you negotiate. Other factors. Other variables to consider when negotiating in foreign countries include importance of preparation and planning, value of thinking under pressure, importance of judgment and intelligence, value of winning respect, the role of integrity, weight of product or service knowledge, importance of communication skills, emotion versus logic, individual and independence versus collective and collaborative. Of course, this just scratches the surface of societal, uh, societal and cultural considerations that need to be factored into global trade negotiation. But if you research your new market country or countries using this presentation as a guideline for determining communication best practices, you'll be well on your way to negotiating effectively. This concludes Business Training's presentation of business etiquette and negotiation in the international arena. Thank you.